Should police be free to search through your cell phone if you're arrested, even for something as simple as jaywalking or a traffic stop? The Supreme Court heard arguments Tuesday on two cases involving cell phone searches, and court observers report that the justices seemed unsure about whether police need a warrant before they can look through your phone. It's the latest clash between the law and a brave new technological world that is changing just about everything. Jamie Floyd is a legal analyst and an Al Jazeera America legal contributor, and we are always very pleased to have you on the show. Good to see you, Jamie, in this post-Edward Snowden world yeah. where we're so focused on privacy. Uh, when you see cases like this, some are calling it one of the biggest cases the Supreme yeah. Court will see this year. Could be a huge precedent. Uh, you know, you could just be driving along, and it, in one of these cases, guy had expired tags. Next thing he knows, 15 years in jail, all because of what was on his cell phone. Right. That was one of the cases where he had expired tags. They found some illegal guns in the car, right. and then that connected him to other gang activity and... Yeah, 15 and, years in jail. You know, the original precedent, you know as well as I, is a 40-year-old case where cops pull a guy over and they search what's in the car, but 40 years ago it wasn't a cell phone, it was a crumpled up cigarette box. And the question then was, can the police search what is in plain view in the car? And even though the cigarette box was crumpled up, what was in it was not in plain view. That was heroin. Cops were entitled to search that because it was reasonably in plain view and in possession of the driver. And so that resulted in a longer prison stay than the pullover. Now we're talking about cell phones, a little different than a crumpled up cigarette case. Right, but also precedents have been read to allow that if you have an address book on yourself, if you have your yeah. wallet, that all that can be searched, and that has private right. information. Right, but who walks around with their medical records, their bank records, 1,500 photographs, every person they've ever communicated with in the last 10 years? I mean, you know, you might have five photographs in a billfold, uh, and maybe a couple of people you communicated with in the last you know, five days, but we carry our lives around in our cell phones, and this is what the justices were getting at today in the arguments. Right, and in fact, in one of the cases, in the one with uh, the one we were talking about, the illegal firearms, what it was one of the pictures that yeah, the guy had on his cell phone that, that sunk him. Yeah. And then the other case was uh, an alleged crack dealer. Uh, so again, they found all this information on these cell phones that then led them to be able to convict them. And he had a flip phone. Right, there wasn't even a <laughs> he didn't smartphone. Have a smartphone. And, and that still gave them the information because it connected a phone call right. to a place where there were apparently illegal drugs. And the justices were really grappling with this notion of what the cell phone is. Is it more like the pack of cigarettes or your purse lying there on the driver's, on the passenger seat? Or is it more like opening the front door of your house? One of the justices asking, uh, you know, isn't this more than what we have in our house? Aren't we carrying more than what we keep in the desk? of our home and a bank vault uh, and every person we've ever known in our cell phone. Right, that's It's more Justice, like the mind. Justice Kagan, in fact, talking about what yes. you said earlier about that you could have pull up medical records, you could get into people's bank accounts by going through their cell phones. So it's a completely different world that we're talking but about. But Justice Breyer joking that he can't even open his cell phone, he doesn't have the password. <laughs> well, that's a whole other issue. I want to get to the technological <laughs> competence of the justices of the Supreme Court in a minute. Yeah. But uh, Justice Kennedy did raise uh, the fact that criminals, and this is some of his language that they've embraced the new technology and that that has enabled them to be more dangerous and more elusive. So raising the question of, well, maybe police should have access well, to these cell phones because it really could stop crime. Well, it's the flip side of the same coin. The technology that makes it uh, so troubling for Justice Kagan is exactly what law enforcement says makes it an exigent circumstance for them. That's the exception, Antonio, that has always been available to law enforcement. Yes, law enforcement says we recognize your constitutional right to be free from unreasonable search and seizure but we have an exception if we think that you're going to eliminate get rid of erase uh, or toss down the toilet right. what it is we're looking for we get to uh, come after you without a search warrant and they're saying when it's a cell phone that exigent circumstance is always there and so we should always at least get to take an initial look a pass at your cell phone maybe we won't look at everything but we want to take a, a, a glimpse at a few things they said maybe we'll just look at a few apps <laughs> well, not, could, it, could there be a middle ground where they could uh. seize the phone 
hold it until a judge yeah. said it's okay to search it and then yeah, you do it. But that way you protect against somebody being able to delete incriminating yeah. information. There's something called a Faraday bag. You can pop the phone into this little bag and it prevents uh, someone uh, remotely wiping off the data. Uh, and you could take it to a judge and ask for a warrant the same way you would go to a home and ask for, uh, go to a judge and ask for a search warrant of a home based on what you've seen in a car. So that is one possibility. But I don't think that will be enough to satisfy law enforcement. And you talked about Justice Breyer not really knowing how to use his phone. <laughs> right. uh, we heard uh, Justice Scalia the other day not knowing that HBO was a pay right. cable uh, service. So the justices, you know, they're a little older than, than their, their clerks uh, are young. Their clerks are young. <laughs> sure, true. So the clerks can help them figure out uh, the technology. But this is really an issue of, and we've talked about this before, of how to understand this new world that we face and how to adjust the law to technology. Yeah, and they have this other big case coming up. Of course, they're dealing with the NSA and privacy issues related to whether the Obama administration and presidents in general and, and uh, National Security Administration can be listening to our conversations and reading our emails and whether or not we as citizens in general enjoy the same kind of privacy we did 40 years ago when the precedent in this case came down. Our privacy in the, this country is very different as a notion than what it was 40 years ago. And that's what the case today was all about. Yeah, important cases about privacy on all sorts of different levels. And again, all involving technology. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, good to see you as always. Thanks. My pleasure.